let's talk course logistics. This isn't a fun topic, but uh, for those of you who are taking this class for credit, this stuff will probably be important to you. Everybody else, maybe you can skip it. Um, I'll note that this slide is green. So if you're someone who's watching the webcasts because you prefer to see the live version of this, uh, these will always be green, so you can easily find it if you're skimming through a 50-minute video. So course logistics, uh, first of all, we have a bunch of different places to get information. So we have this course website here, which is data structures, very clever. Uh, we actually, in keeping the tradition, we would have done cs61b.org, but somebody sniped it, and I guess it's available for sale, but I will never reward domain snipers. Uh, so that's gonna be the main place where everything is, and I encourage you to go there to find everything. Uh, we'll also have lectures, uh, which I'm doing here. There's also webcasts for the live lecture um, each semester so that you can see what really happened in the room. Uh, we have a Piazza discussion forum. Uh, we have office hours that are in uh, 109 Morgan. Uh, and then we also, of course, have our various places where we get together. We have lab and discussion. Uh, and in addition to these uh, scheduled times for lab and discussion, we also have guerrilla sections, which will be special discussion sections we'll talk about later, which are uh, mastery learning based, where you work in groups until everybody gets the problem. Um, we'll have group tutoring sections for those of you who want a little extra help, five on one or even one on one. Um, and then there's also this little textbook, uh, which I don't have a name for it yet. So it's just called Hug 61B for now. And that is linked uh, just on the main page. Uh, these readings here are part of that little text. Uh, and the goal with that was just to build a free online resource that was really tailored to 61B. If you don't really like it, there's alternate readings on the Spring 16 version of the course that you can check out instead. Uh, so that's all the official places where you can get information for this course. And then of course, there are a bunch of unofficial channels. Uh, I welcome you as you're working through the class to go Googling for things. Though of course, please do not Google solutions to the homeworks um, because you will not learn things by looking at them. It won't work out well. Uh, so if you are somebody enrolled in the class and you're on the wait list, um, if you do Project Zero, I'll do whatever I can to get you in by week four. I don't have a lot of power to get people into the class, but I can at least tell people to, I don't know, try and do something. Uh, this week, uh, or at least at the beginning of the class, we're going to have uh, the morning sections are going to be really popular and the evening ones less so. Uh, so if you don't have uh, a particular discussion or lab, you can go to any section or lab. Uh, but if you are already enrolled in a section, uh, I ask that you try and go to the one that you're officially registered for. Uh, that way we don't get super overcrowded. That's especially important in the lab. So maybe hover outside the room for the first, uh, you know, two minutes before, sorry, for the first two minutes before the class starts. And then if there's room, go on in. Uh, and then after attendance settles, you can do whatever you want. Um, but for now, while things are crowded, uh, make sure to be courteous to your fellow student. Uh, if you do get to a section and it's super full, uh, priority will go to those who are officially registered. Uh, if you have any administrative issues, we ask that you post it to the discussion forums. Or if you'd like, you can send an email to cs61b at Berkeley. Um, what I ask is you don't email me directly with logistical issues because I won't be as helpful as somebody else because I'm probably just going to send you to someone else anyway. Uh, and the other thing is that with over a thousand students, if you actually do the math, if I were to say, hey, everybody, come meet me for just one minute, uh, that would take 22 hours to complete that process. So logistical emails, you know, even if they're taking only a small amount of time, it adds up. Um, now, as far as the course goes, perhaps more interesting to you, uh, this course is broken into uh, three parts. This is the new vision for 61B that I tried out last spring. So the first part is an introduction to Java that's oriented around data structures. What we're going to do is learn Java in the context of building lists. So I've used lists in some language like Python before. Uh, in this class, we're going to kick off learning Java by thinking about different ways to build lists. And that'll give us the syntax we need uh, to move forward. Uh, so what we're going to have during this time, we have an optional homework zero that's already out uh, that I encourage you to do if you haven't yet. Uh, we'll have uh, three labs during this period that are going to introduce you to all the real world tools we're going to be using throughout the semester. And I'll warn you in advance, it's going to be annoying. Things are not going to work at first. You're going to have to beat your head against the wall. But I think that's a really important uh, thing for you to learn how to do. So I've resisted the urge to try and just write the master installer that just installs everything uh, because I think it is really important that you know how to deal with uh, the messiness of, say, the command line and installing software and getting things working, because you'll be doing it forever. Uh, then we'll also have two projects, Project Zero and One, uh, and those are going to be our programming homework during that period, a couple of little projects. Phase two will be the advanced programming part of the class, and this is the part where you're going to really get a chance to design something. You're going to work in a, a team of people, a pair of people, um, 
kind of. We'll talk about how it's a little more complicated much later. But basically, you'll work with a group of people to come up with the design to solve a problem. So unlike programming classes you might have had before, where it's, well, you know, fill in this function that does this thing, here you're going to have to design the architecture. And I think you'll find it really challenging. Uh, and this is the part of the class where it will really, um, for those of you who are um, average to not uh, sorry average to below average programmers this part will be really hard I'm just warning you in advance but it's good for you I'm not doing it to like weed you out or scare you away I'm doing it because I want to build you into being really independent programmers to set the bar high enough and make you realize you can do something you didn't know you knew how to do uh, so that big project will be due March 6th uh, and there'll be some labs to help support that project so we'll do little peer design reviews um, and we'll talk more about that later mm, okay Premiere is installing, good. Um, then the final phase of the class is our standard data structures and algorithms class. Uh-oh, I don't wanna do this right now, Premiere. We'll get to it later. Uh, so weeks eight through 14 are gonna be, uh, we're gonna learn about how what a hash table is, what binary search trees are, all this classic stuff that goes in a data structures class. And during that time, each of the labs is going to be implement some data structure algorithm. In each of those labs, uh, whenever you go in person, the last say, 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how things work out, the TA will lead you through a good implementation of that thing. So it'll be a chance to reflect on what you've just done. And the lab should be self-contained. So uh, it shouldn't feel like an extra homework. It's just a chance to really think about a particular implementation. We'll also have homeworks during that period. And each one of those homeworks is going to be to apply a data structure or algorithm. So rather than implementing a hash table, you'll use them for something. And I hope that you'll find it interesting. Uh, and so there'll be two of these, uh, the two of these homeworks are going to be released after classes are over. Uh, and those you can think of as uh, extra practice or makeups for homeworks you missed earlier. And I'll talk more about the drop policies and grading in a moment. Uh, and during that time, there'll be one medium sized data structure and algorithms project where you won't have to do all the architecture, but you will have to select the data structures and think carefully about how to organize your code. And you'll have to implement an algorithm uh, that will allow you to traverse uh, a graph. You'll learn what that means later. Uh, and so if you're curious, you can look at the calendar to see how these three phases work uh, and look at the whole schedule, but I won't talk about it more now. Uh, so as far as what you have to do each week, there are labs and uh, these labs are required. It's okay to work on the, the labs ahead of time. Uh, and while the work in the labs is required for the course, being in person is not required. So if you want, you could do the labs from home and that's fine. Uh, but especially if you're somebody who is does not feel like a strong programmer, I think you'll find uh, them hopefully really helpful, especially at the beginning when you're trying to get things set up. Uh, there will be some special project labs where attendance is required. Those will be uh, a little later, and I'll talk about those uh, in a different lecture, but that's uh, be aware you can do things from home. Uh, labs are always gonna be due Friday at five, uh, so that way you know it's done, um, and you can your weekend begin, it can begin. <laughs> Uh, and then there's also some labs, by the way, that are freebies. There'll be one lab in particular, which is just go work on project two and you'll get free points for that one. You don't have to show up. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna have, uh, I guess, sorry. And uh, summarizing what the labs are all about, we have 14 of those. They're worth four points each uh, and that's gonna come to 48 points. The reason is uh, that it doesn't come to more points than that is because we're gonna drop your lowest two. And that's intended to cover any life difficulties. Uh, so because we have so many students, these drops are supposed to handle your life emergencies. So the thing where you're about to submit your code, but then your computer crashed or, you know, your internet went out or whatever it may be. Sorry, I know it's a bummer. You did this work and you're not getting credit for it, uh, but we're going to drop two labs so that those kind of emergencies get smoothed out. Now, if you have some kind of really big life crisis that's bigger than two weeks, of course, we'll work with you and make sure uh, things are better. But for the run of the mill, you know, dog ate my homework situations, uh, that's what the drops are for. They're not intended to be, well, I didn't want to do some of the work. Okay. Uh, discussions, those will also be happening once uh, a week, and those will be an hour each. Uh, attendance for these is not required, but you can earn a gold point for every discussion you go to, and I'll explain what those are in a moment. Uh, so attendance is not taken the first two weeks. You can't get your gold points then, uh, but after that, you'll be able to accumulate these gold points. And basically what they are is they're extra credit, but it's extra credit that the worse you do on the exams, uh, the more the gold points count, up to a maximum of double. So if you go to 10 discussions and you get zero on the exams, you will get 20 points added to your final score. Now it is not an advantageous strategy to intentionally get zeros on the exams that will not work out in your favor, as you'll see in the point totals later, uh, but it's basically just another little way uh, so that if you're somebody who's really struggling, you can demonstrate your participation uh, in the course 
and let us know that you're really trying and you're thinking about things and that will give us uh, some measure of the fact that, that you're doing well in the course, even if you maybe have trouble on some exam problem you get stuck on. Uh, we have homeworks. So there's gonna be seven total four credit homeworks in the class, homeworks one through seven. And there's also this optional homework zero already available. Uh, homeworks two through seven are all about using data structures and algorithms to solve some problem. And homework one is basically gonna be as we transition into advanced programming, it's a little mini project, uh, or sorry, mini assignment you do before you kick off that big design project I alluded to. And so these due dates are gonna vary. They're not gonna be due any particular day. Make sure to check the calendar. Uh, and so seven uh, of these seven homeworks, we're gonna drop two. Uh, and since there were 16 points, that comes to 80 points total. Uh, and again, these are intended to cover life difficulties. So if you have problems, the drops are supposed to handle those. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, homework six and seven are actually gonna be released during uh, the recitation week at the end of the semester. Uh, so again, you can think of it as practice if you want. And if you missed an earlier homework, you can then do those homeworks to make up for something you missed earlier. Uh, and then lastly, we have our projects. And so the projects in 61B are fairly famous in terms of being really challenging. Uh, you know, there's, there's some infamy surrounding past projects like Gitlet and Editor. Um, and in this semester, I think there will be no exception. Uh, though I'm hoping this semester that for, um, for programmers who don't have a lot of experience, I'm really hoping to not annihilate you and make your lives miserable. Um, and we'll, of course, keep in contact because this class is always a delicate balancing act because I want to make it really hard, uh, but I don't want to make it miserable. And so we'll be working together to make sure it works well. Uh, so projects, two of them are team projects. So project zero, which will be released on the first Friday of class, uh, that's gonna be 25 points. Then we'll have a solo project that's 40 points. And that's gonna be a two week project. Uh, then there's gonna be this team project will be a three week design project. And then finally we come around to the solo uh, and final project, which is 75 points. So these are small, medium, and large. Uh, and on the solo projects, all of your work needs to be your own. I'll be uh, elaborating a bit more uh, in a future lecture about what exactly your own work means. Uh, but if you'd like to read it now, you can check out the collaboration policy on the website. And it's always okay to talk to other students in the class and help them debug and even uh, bounce ideas back and forth. But your code really needs to be your work. Uh, and then I'll mention also that these last two projects, two and three, they have extra credit opportunities. Uh, if you turn in uh, the, the code early enough that you pass the early submission tests. So basically there'll be some early tests and if you get those right, you'll get some bonus points. Uh, you'll get some bonus points. And then uh, on both of those projects, there'll also be some stretch goals, like extra hard things you can do that will earn you some gold points. Uh, and that's uh, the story of projects. And we have exams. So exams in this class are going to be hard. Um, if you've taken 61A, you know what that is like and you'll get used to this in the academic environment at Berkeley. So the exams are targeted around a median of around 60%. Uh, and so 60%, the point there is not to crush you and say, you know nothing, right? Because if you came from high school, 60 is like the worst grade you can imagine, depending on where you're from. But if you're from the United States, 60 would be like, I don't know, I'm in trouble. Like someone's gonna, like my parents are gonna kick in my door and set fire to my bed and I don't know, whatever, whatever it is that parents tend to do. Uh, probably not arson in their own homes though. Uh, but anyway, uh, the point of these 60% medians is to let you know what you don't know, which is a little different. It's to say there's still more to go. You haven't mastered everything. Uh, and there are students that even though the median is around 60, that get up in the 90s on these exams. Uh, and it's a way to make sure that everybody really has a fair grade. Because if the exams of 90 is what's considered good, then someone who does great, they have no way to demonstrate that. They have no way to get the feedback to know like, yes, you're really doing super well. And that's something that's important to us here. Uh, to really give you a sense of like what it is that you can strive for. Now, what's interesting is that, um, you know, students often, as I mentioned in the previous video, had this mental model that some students are destined for greatness and some are not. And that is really not what this exam process is about. It is not about like separating out those who have like the special magical piece in their brain that makes them do well. Because my suspicion uh, based on education research is that if you had uh, the resources and the time and you approach studying uh, appropriately, probably most everybody in this class could get into the 90s on the exam. So anyway, it won't happen, but it could. Um, and it's only, you know, our failure as instructors in some ways, we don't get you all there. Sorry, um, but we'll do what we can. Uh, so then um, with these exams, we're gonna have two midterms. They're in the evenings uh, and there'll be one final exam. Uh, and then there are closed notes, closed book, but you can bring one sheet of handwritten notes 
uh, per exam. So for the first exam, you get one sheet, second exam, you get two, third, you get three. Uh, and there is one extra neat thing, which is that uh, we actually have a policy, especially given the fact that we know that many of you are trying to get into the major and your grades really matter. Uh, if your midterm grades are worse than you do on your final, statistically, uh, we can replace your midterm score. So we have a specific mechanical process. Uh, you can read all about it on the website, but basically if you have a bad early midterm that doesn't doom you, uh, the final can actually help you uh, recover using a process we call shadow. Uh, the exam dates. So uh, this date is confirmed. Uh, this is Valentine's Day from 7 to 9 p.m. Sorry, that's the only date I was able to get that fit. Uh, I tried. They almost gave me the day before, but then they said we'd have to have 20 exam rooms. And I actually said that's fine, uh, but then, I don't know, then they decided <laughs> they didn't want to give us that many rooms. Uh, and so uh, that'll be the exam time. Uh, and the drop deadline will be uh, February 17th for the course. So this semester is a very special semester for many of you because uh, it's, you know, how you do in this class may make the difference between really getting into computer science or not. Uh, and so as a result, we want to make sure you get feedback on this first exam. We'll actually have advising sessions in between the midterm and this drop deadline. So you can make a decision about whether or not to drop the class. Because once that drop deadline passes, you're pretty much committed. So we want to make sure uh, that if you're somebody that's really passionate about computer science, but you've struggled, we want to make sure that we can let you know that you need a little more time to catch up before you really give 61B a shot. So that's the point, and that's why, sorry, we have to ruin your Valentine's Day. Uh, midterm two will be March 22nd, probably, but I haven't gotten this confirmed. Uh, and then the final will definitely be May 10th at 7 p.m. Now, if you're somebody that has alternate exam times, uh, we will accommodate you. Uh, don't email me directly, as I mentioned earlier. We'll actually provide a a form because we know there's lots of people some people have exam conflicts with the finals because we have overlapping lecture times and just things happen with 1300 people you can't help but have alternate final or alternate exam times and so we will have a form don't worry yet um, we'll send out the information when it's time uh, so to summarize all of this these are all the things you do in this class you have labs and homeworks that will help you understand uh, the basics of the class we have projects that i'm hoping will build you into independent programmers uh, and they're worth a lot more points uh, and then we have our midterms and finals to assess how well you understood the theoretical content of the class. Uh, and so the reason, by the way, these homeworks and labs are not weighted very much is they're not intended to be uh, to evaluate your competence. They're there to help you build your skills. Uh, projects actually serve sort of a dual role um, so that those of you so you can get credit for the project or the programming work you're doing. And you can also learn at the same time. Uh, so overall, uh, there are 768 points you can earn, and there's also extra credit points. And the website details how there's 16 total extra credit points that involve surveys and yada yada, um, and that's the score you get. So at the end of the class, the way we assign grades is we take your total score, and then we compare it to a bunch of bends. Uh, the course website shows every single bend, but I've just given the highlights here. So if you need a C-, minus, there's 368 points you need to earn. Um, we don't really typically do anything more complicated than that. You know, I, I don't, uh, you know, occasionally when someone's like barely, barely, barely on the border and they've been just really, truly uh, wonderful on Piazza and I have the data to back it up and say like that person answered like 200 student, other students' questions and you're right on the border, then occasionally we'll bump people, but it is exceedingly rare. So you should think of these as pretty much what your score is gonna be. Um, I don't do the thing that some classes do where at the end of the semester I say, um, oh, well, we don't have enough A's, so I'm going to lower all the bins and C's and so forth. I mean, I will if it goes really badly, like we really screw up writing the exams or you guys perform differently than we expect. Um, but in the last two times I've taught this class, I haven't had to change the bins. So for the most part, the bins, I anticipate, assuming that we do everything right, uh, that this should be the way the grades come out. Um, I will definitely not make the grades any worse. So if it turns out that we accidentally make the exams too easy, then people accidentally get grades that are too high. Um, but you should consider yourself, the goals you're striving for are the ones on the site uh, and plan accordingly. Uh, so as far as the course goes, we're gonna start off real quick. Um, we already have a homework zero that's out and you really should be working on it. Uh, if you haven't done it yet, I highly encourage you to do it before your lab if it's not too late and especially before you watch the second lecture because I'm not going to go through and explain like this is a while loop, this is an if statement and everything because you've done that before uh, and this is your chance to actually see what it looks like on your own. One of the things I really, really want to encourage you to do in this class is experiment. You're not going to explode your computer. Um, you may as well try things out and uh, because I, I want you to be able to go out there and, and 
do the things you want to do without having to get help from someone. Okay? We're still going to give you help because this is a very hard class, uh, but it'll be important for you to really push yourself to the limits uh, before you, you uh, come and ask for help. Not because we don't want to, but because it's good for you. Uh, then uh, the other thing going on now is we have labs this first week. So lab one is how to use the various tools, which is the Java compiler uh, and the Git version control software. And you're going to hate Git at first. Okay, just gonna tell you, uh, but you'll get used to it. Everybody else has, um, maybe someday there'll be a slightly better abstraction we all agree on for how version control should work. But till then, Git's the story. Uh, and then we have uh, lab one B. So you should do this actually before lab one, despite the weird naming, uh, if you wanna do work on your own computer, which is pretty much everybody. So this lets you set up all the software in your computer, but if you run into any hitches, we'll be there in lab. Um, one exception to what I was saying earlier about trying to explore on your own, uh, with lab one and lab one B, there's a lot of pitfalls. So definitely ask us questions early when it comes to computer setup stuff, because unlike programming languages, which you do have experience with, with computer setup, there's all kinds of annoying things that can happen. Uh, and I don't want you to waste like three hours of your day trying to get Git installed or something. So definitely talk to us about computer setup issues ASAP. Uh, Project Zero will be re uh, released Friday. That is the date of that second lecture. And it will be due a week later. Okay, So you get seven days to do this project. And it's going to be a chance to use all of the basic features of Java to build a gravity simulator where you can watch planets orbiting in space. Uh, and in this project, you're allowed to work in pairs. I'll talk a little bit more on Friday about how those pairs work. Uh, but the key rule here is that you cannot work with somebody who's taken a Java class if you've not. So you either need to both have taken a Java class or uh, both not have taken a Java class. And so we'll have a form uh, that we'll send out uh, so you can sign up and set up your partnerships. So in the next video, which I actually recorded, let's see, August, September, October, November, December, six months ago, uh, we'll do our first programming assignment. So now let's step backwards in time and see younger me uh, tell you about your first uh, Java program.